my god. It's full of shit. Type. Sonic Garbage. Released. The 26th of January 2018. In an anti-fire rally. Rate your mucus rating. 2.01 out of 5.0 from 566 ratings. The number of non, brainwashed, non-liberals on RYM, has risen drastically in recent years. I guess this means many users will be banned in following months, in a Stalinist purge to purify the site back to its Marxist origins, genres. Cheese Metal. SJW Metal. Descriptors. Whining, emo, lame, stupid, embarrassing, cringe, soft, sellout, pro-establishment, anti-rebellious, white guilt, midlife crisis, menopause, boring, hilarious, garbage, crap. A catharsis is the process of releasing, and thereby providing relief from, strong or oppressed emotions. Hence this word cannot or should not, be used to describe extreme release of political butthurt. That is catharsis isn't a synonym for whiny hissy fit by clueless spoiled brat. What we have here is a toilet arsis, a release of a completely different kind, both musically and otherwise. Also known as a turd arsis. And what's with that album cover? Did that poor woman just undergo a machine head arsis? The process of being tortured by cheesy, socially aware corporate new metal. All proceeds of this album should go toward helping in her recovery, although that won't be enough, by far. Hence this review is only the first small step toward helping her. It's up to you to continue this fundraising effort. Her name is Cheese on the Evictimson. www.helpcheeseoneavictimson.org Many rate your mucus users wrote that Robbie is behaving like a man, well, man boy, deep in a midlife crisis, or at least menopause, but venting his anger like a teenager. An SJW teenager, to make things more cringy. He is going about it in a very exhibitionist way, to make things worse, okay, fine, as a rock star he is expected to be extroverted with his lameness as if he should actually be proud of behaving like this in front of his fans, and the rest of us who can't get enough of this train wreck of a devolution. Unfortunately, he was a bit that way back in the 90s too, often dressing up like a circus clown, presenting himself as though he were a white suburban 15-year-old rap nerd, trying so hard to be black, which was embarrassing enough to witness when he was in his 20s, but now it's akin to a 50s monster B-movie role in the popcorn. Nothing wrong with having the energy and passion of a teenager, Robbie, but having the mindset of one is problematic, you are supposed to combine the best of both worlds, not try to revert back to a full-on teen state. I apologize to teens for this ugly comparison, even you, don't deserve it, but even many teens aren't buying into it. Besides, in the 90s his music was much better. For one thing, it wasn't cheesy. By this I mean he didn't focus on those bloody awful corporate pop hooks in the choruses, the way metal whore and new metal bands do. Anyway, even when he did something in that ballpark, on Burning Red, not a brilliant album by any means but definitely underrated, it wasn't nearly as bad as what he then started in the following decade. If he had launched his career with a power metal or a new metal band, then people might understand or forgive, but he started out as an old school thrash guitarist, the band Violence had no cheese whatsoever, which makes this toxic metamorphosis all the more ludicrous, and by now even comical. However, the cheese didn't start with this album. Far from it, that yellow stuff was already melting on several albums before this one, including that awful, vastly overrated fart cake called The Slackening. Here's how I'd rated some of the more recent Machine Head albums. Supercharger. 1.5 stars. Beginning of the end. The Slackening. 1 star. A horrible album considered a classic. Under the Locust. 1 star. 
cheesy crap, not much worse than this. So this new collection of poops is hardly a great downfall, as some people claim. In fact, all of his albums starting with Super Duper Charger are dumps worthy. But even these last four to five stink bombs didn't have quite this level of incompetence and sloppiness, in terms of writing, not performance. Vocally, Robbie may have created his own scent anger. What I mean by that is that his singing, here is a sort of equivalent of Lars's drum sound. Or like Hetfield going tick 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 tock tick 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 tock. Pick either, Lars bashing his pots and pans, or James trying to figure out if he's gonna explode or not. Robbie alternates between standard growling, corny rapping and outright twining. I guess he must be in touch with his inner emo now, and that bitchy little inner emo is like a devious little devil egging him on to newer, lower lows. The rather pathetic crackling in his voice, when he is trying to convey all of his Welchmers through this new, growl whiny bitch singing style, evokes a weird mix of disgust and amusement, for me at least. I'm torn between booing, and applauding. As if the previous four to five albums weren't indication enough, the three early released tracks just served to confirm the impending badness. In fact, these songs had suggested that Robbie's annoying brand of cheesy metal whore inspired pop metal, which he'd been practicing for many years now, in case you weren't paying attention, was going to get a notch worse. Some rather overly dramatic metal heads even announced that Kath's asses was about to become one of the worst metal debacles of the decade. That almost made me as excited as anticipating a release that might be best album of the decade. Of course, I don't agree, because for a debacle to occur you have to be on a high first. You can't fall down if you're sitting on the bottom of a well. He hasn't been on a music high since the 90s, and even those albums are not classics. This is far from the biggest disappointment, or worst album of the decade. There are many that are far worse. Just think brutal growly metal, Dragon Fass and the Cheese Brigade, symphonic pop groups, pompous true cult black metal, metal whore, metal core boy bands and the rest. So much awful stuff to choose from, even if we limit ourselves here exclusively to albums from big name metal bands. I am slightly baffled how people can enjoy his previous several albums, yet consider this an abomination or whatever. This isn't a huge departure for Robbie at all, musically at least. He's been recording cheesy crap for so many years now, this is simply a new lowering of already low standards. But I'm repeating myself, and that's why my reviews are so bloody long. The title track, and several others such as Grind You Down, is an amalgamation of mutually exclusive tunes, an absolute mess of stitched together random melodies. Robbie is a hack. The song starts off decently enough for a minute and a bit, but then the vocals kick in, literally a Miley Cyrus section, then some heaviness, then more corporate cheesy metal buffoonery, then the tough guy growls, then more cheesy stuff, and so on. Beyond the Pale is even worse. It starts off with a strapping young lad riff, then goes into a Miley Cyrus moment, then gets all pseudo macho on our collective asses, then goes into the sugary bitch whiny section again, and then there's the ugly chorus, while the soul riff drones on and on. And it's not even a good soul riff. Flynn is so confused, he can't even choose the right riffs to steal. If you are going to steal riffs from superior bands, at least steal the good ones, for your garbage music. He literally listened to Alien, wondered for a while what to take from it, then chose the most boring riff. That takes some doing. But it's bastards that really takes the cake. Imagine Machine Head doing Neil Young, or covering a song from some delusional, pompous three chord indie folk, hipster chick. Well, you need not imagine it any longer, because it's right there on the album, along with several ballads, or whatever we choose to call them. This is a truly amazing, and hilarious, piece of poopery that has all the potential to become legendary.
kind of the way Lil Wayne became a legendary meme with his amazing one note one finger guitar shredding. Or the way Charlie Sheen is now a legend. To add insult to injury, or additional comedy, depending how you look at the current MH Circus, the song is a whiny wanna be SJW anthem. Cringe Factor 1000. Talk about a delusional poser totally forgetting where he'd come from. Talk about letting rock stardom totally obliterate the few grey cells you started off with. Talk about a midlife crisis that makes you look weaker than a twee snowflake. Robbie must think he's God's gift to the world, that his shit doesn't stink. UMH fanboys can confirm or deny whether his shit stinks, just like all the other political rock whiners who impersonate messiahs, carrying an important message for mankind. This sort of over-the-top narcissism is in his nature, it's not that new. Already his idiotic head decorations, that keep changing more often than I change my socks, had already strongly hinted at it, back in the mid-90s, when he had started MH, but I couldn't have guessed back then what a boring, attention-seeking, whiny little emo poser he'd turn into eventually. How can guys pushing 50 turn into emos? Back in the day, in violence, he was just a simple, unpretentious kid thrashing away, at least he appeared that way. When did the ego take over, and turn him into such a pompous, virtuous signaling brat? Success can truly rot away at the character of a person, this happens way too often, Robbie is one of the poster boys of this. Musically speaking, whoever writes songs this way has either lost all self-respect or has become, deaf. Flynn might just be both. This is just another greedy sellout, accompanied by an attempt to distract from the obvious commercial cheese, by becoming socially relevant. I have little patience for his beans who are cynically milking what little is left of their mediocre careers, for that extra bit of cash, until even their most devoted fanboys realize that, hey, actually this band's been playing garbage for well over a decade. I have no doubts that this album will be a sort of mini Sentanga, and that once the hoopla is over with, most metal fans will have mocked the bejesus out of Robbie, and Robbie will have realized what a ridiculous spectacle he'd made of himself. Or maybe I overestimate him. Because perhaps he will just continue being the cringe guy, taking after Lyle Rick who'd perfected the public enemy number one image which he schizophrenically cultivates despite wanting desperately to be loved by all metal fans. Lars showed the metal scene how it's not done, yet Robbie completely failed to learn anything from that lesson. He aimed high, wanting to be the metal Bono or Dylan, but fell flat on his face, becoming Lars instead. That's what happens to slam poetry readers. Cringe alarm. Just typing those words makes me embarrassed for Robbie. Regarding that clip where he slams poetry, make sure you don't watch it, because it could make you lose all faith in humanity. It's actually worse than Madonna giving pompous, mindless political speeches to airhead New York Yenters. It's a good thing I have little to zero interest in lyrics, generally speaking, as I can only imagine how bad they must be, from what I've read about them. Plenty of whiny vocalizing and unconvincing pseudo-rebellious f-bombs are gringy enough, so it's a good thing that he at least slurs his words just enough so I don't have to follow the plot in these compositions. There is nothing I resent more, than awful lyrics that are pronounced well. Fortunately, Robbie is too cool to not mumble and slur. Marlon Brando was the first poser who popularized non-clear mumble speak. If he is going to be this lazy and uninspired, he might as well release an album every month. His fanboys will thank him for it, because just like Metlikos fans, they eat up anything their idols shit out. Hey. Robbie really smart. Robbie clever. When he talks about Polly. Dicks. Robbie make great songs about Polly. Dicks. Robbie social coming. Tater. Robbie so smart.